Let's you and I be honest with one another. I am not the intended audience for a Toyota RAV4. In the 11 year history of this show, we have never driven a RAV4 together and I never thought I'd see the day that we would. However, I am a cheapskate and I recently found out that there is a Toyota RAV4 one can plug into a wall and drive for up to 40 miles on electric charge. Now translated into my world, that is a daily driver. But the real kicker, this same vehicle you plug into the wall and drive for 40 miles, it has more horsepower than some brand new Toyota Supras. So surprise of surprises, yet another Toyota with a parallel hybrid system. The basis here are 2.5 four-cylinder gasoline engine that runs on an Atkinson cycle. 177 horsepower comes in at 6,000 RPM. 165 pound-feet of torque comes in at a relatively aggressive 3,600 RPM. However, the saving grace here are three electric motors. There's one in the back. We'll talk about that later. There are two up front, but let's not be pedantic. Let's focus on the one that does most of the work. 179 horsepower, 199 pound-feet of torque that comes in from zero. Now, this is a vehicle that Toyota says is geared towards sport. But that doesn't mean you could add all of those numbers and get to, what, 358 horsepower. Instead, total system horsepower is 302. Now, it does do a couple of things. It actually tows 2,500 pounds. And then the real business here is fuel economy. Yeah, they talk about 94.5 MPGE. But in reality, uh, using it as a hybrid, it's 40, 36, and 38 combined. You and I have a couple of modes here. Let's start with the most basic. That would be the hybrid mode, and they say it's tuned for sport. Let's do it. That is foot to the floor in a Toyota baby buggy. Wow, there is a little torque steer there, but I would go so far as to saying this is almost quick. Strike that, it's quick. Now, the most noticeable thing here, aside from clearly a different tune to the same engine that we drove in the Venza, is a better handoff between the EV motor, which is really used for high load, low speed situations, and then moving over to the gas engine, which is high speed, low load situations. Here, it's more seamless than other Toyota Synergy drive systems that you and I have driven over the past couple of years. You guys know the drill by now. This is where I, a six footer, would sit, but that is the least of our business back here. We need to focus more on packaging, uh, specifically the wheelbase 105.9 inches. That is exactly the same as a Toyota Venza. However, interestingly, this is shorter than the Toyota Venza, yet it has more storage in the rear than the Toyota Venza. That is because it has taller, more upright D pillars. That brings us to the most important part of our packaging business back here, and that is where does the battery reside? Well, you may remember in the Venza, it was under the rear seat, which is exactly the same place as in the RAV4 hybrid without the plug. This one has to package a larger battery, specifically 18.1 kilowatt hours. So that sits under the floor of the vehicle. Now, if you were betting that that would impact the curb weight of the vehicle, you would be correct. This is the more fancy of the two models on offer, so it's 4,300 pounds. If it was the more basic, you'd save about 65 pounds. And speaking of basic, I keep on bringing up the Venza here because that it's kind of a home run. They kind of sold out of those things because it is so nice on the inside and it's really a Lexus for about a 25% discount. Uh, this, you do not get that feeling on the inside. It's not bad, but it, it just doesn't have that luxury car feel like the Venza does. I would argue between the two, this better propulsion system, the Venza, it's just a nicer package. Everything underneath the refresher, uh, McPherson struts up front, multi-link in the rear. Most importantly, it is all wheel drive, but there is no drive shaft connecting the gas motor in the front and the wheels in the back. The wheels in the back are driven with an electric motor. And here's another surprising thing. Is it a Porsche Macan? Absolutely not. But again, the tune of this clearly 
If you look at it on a spectrum and you were to compare it against something that is realistic, like a Mazda CX-5, that's up here in driving dynamics, I would argue the Venza was down here because it was tuned to be a luxury vehicle. It was tuned to be a Lexus. So there was more float, there was more lean from side to side. Here they've done a better job with controlling specifically lean and I would not at all be surprised that the bigger battery pack in the Prime mounted low in the vehicle, which would lower the center of gravity, that probably has something to do with the improved ride quality here. So I've been toying with the idea of a new segment called Things That Piss Me Off. Here's a great example. If you didn't know, I live in the California Republic, specifically Los Angeles. Most people aren't aware of this, but it's a desert. Even though it's next to the Pacific Ocean, it gets really hot here. And you and I drive these fancy cars from like Germany and Sweden. They have screens everywhere, but no knobs, no nothing. So you get in the car when it's like 200 degrees out, you wanna put the air conditioning on, you have to wait for the system to boot up. 10 minutes later, finally you can get to the HVAC. 30 minutes later, the air conditioning is finally on. By then, maybe you will live to see another day. Well, apparently, this is not an issue in Toyotas. Specifically this one, they've got a, a button on the key fob that literally is marked AC, as in like air conditioning. So you hit and hold this button, the car locks the doors, and it turns the air conditioning on without the 38 minute wait while you melt in the car. You hear it? Now the only problem is what do I do with this 38 minutes that I just saved and I'm not gonna die from heat exhaustion? Oh, you know what? Maybe we could talk about the fact that most cars need to borrow a page out of this one and actually have knobs on the dashboard again. But you know what? That's going to be another segment of things that piss me off. And with that, it's about time for you and I get to the prime time of the prime, and that is EV mode, foot to the floor. This is 100% EV at this point. Notice the energy monitor, the gas engine is not working. Okay, so that is pretty quick. That was in the basic mode. Let's try this again in sports, see if it changes the throttle mapping. Uh, acceleration from higher speeds, you really don't notice a difference. But you know what, let's slow down. And let's try that again from a dead stop. And there we go, hit it again. That's in sport mode. No, you do not notice the personality difference as much in the EV mode as we did in the hybrid mode. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game of mine, the options game with today's contestant. Something incredibly practical, yet A, with a plug, and B, some horsepower that we have found to be usable throughout this episode thus far. Uh, the 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime for a base price of $38,100. Now I am kind of sandbagging you there. The 38,000 price, that is the most basic car. The SE, this car is not the most basic car. Yet the SE, it does have some stuff in it, like a power driver's seat, Apple CarPlay, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the XSE we are driving instead is $41,425. And there really is only one option package we are adding to it, the weather and audio package. Um, I will let you guess, one of the options that's in that option package, it is a JBL stereo. And then it changes some of the safety doodads as well as the navigation for $2,435. The only thing we add to that is the destination and handling $1,120 for a total retail price of $44,900. Now as a basis of comparison, I know I'm keep on bringing up the Venza in this episode, but that's about the same price as the very fancy Venza we drove, what, a month ago? Yet there is a way to make this one even more fancy, and that is a package called the Premium Package Weather and Audio, which has all the stuff we talked about, plus a head-up display, a power passenger seat, and most importantly, a faster charger, which brings the charging times down from about five hours to two and a half hours. The price of what I would call this flash package, $5,760 which changes the total retail price of this vehicle to $48,305. Put another way, that's really close 
to 50 large. Stopping hardware is somewhat decent. 12.9 inch diameter rotors in the front, 12.4 in the rear, but much more importantly in a vehicle like this, especially with a second propulsion system, is brake feel. So let's accelerate a little bit here. Uh, and what's readily apparent is a significant change in the brake feel. Prius are mainly known for a really bad on-off switch feel. It doesn't have that natural brake feel to it because of the regen system. Here they do a better job at masking it. And then while you and I are on the topic of regen, that can be adjusted in the prime derivation of the RAV4 via paddles on the steering wheel. No, it does not shift gears here. I don't think this thing even has gears. But that ain't the point. More regen on the left paddle, less on the right for a total of three different levels of regenerative braking. And now for something completely unexpected. I enjoyed my experience with a Toyota RAV4. Now, two huge provisions with that statement. Uh, first, in my time with the vehicle, I drove it to and from Santa Barbara, and before each leg, I fully charged it and I got almost the entirety of the promised 40 miles of EV range, which translated to me only using four gallons of gas to go 200 miles. And full disclosure, I wasn't driving slow. I was in eco mode, but wasn't driving slow. That brings us to the next part of the equation. I am struggling really hard with almost 45 grand for this one and Definitely 48 grand for the super fancy one with the head-up display and the faster charger. And here's a suggestion to the folks in Plano. Uh, you could pass this to the folks in Japan. Uh, those prices are too much. However, 38 grand maybe come up with a standalone sunroof option for like 500 bucks, and we'll call it a day at 38.5. That would be prudent because the vehicle, for what it is, it, it's quite a thing.